Hey everyone, this is Dave Pike, Motor City Mechanic. We've got another video today on a Dodge Dart. This is a 2013 model. I'm going to show you where the smart drive control unit is, what you need to do to remove it, and how to gain access to it. And basically give you a little background and what it's all about. Alright, so the transmission is a Dodge Dart is what they call a dual drive clutch. So let me give you a little background on it and that explain basically what the smart drive unit is. Now it's basically a manual transmission that's controlled using hydraulics and electronics. So it's taking the driver input out such as clutch pedal and stick shift. And it's using it like an automatic shifter and you've just got your basic brake and throttle. Now all the other manual movement of the gear train inside that transmission is done hydraulically which is controlled by a couple of computers. One of them is the trans control module which is located inside the vehicle. I've done a video previously on how to gain access and how to remove that. And then it's got a redheaded stepchild called the smart drive unit. Smart drive unit is basically a solid state relay. It looks like a small computer with one connector but its function is very limited. It doesn't have a lot of brains. It's basically told what to do by the trans controller. So it's mounted up under the hood near the battery. Now its sole purpose is to turn on the hydraulic pump when commanded by the trans controller. It gets power and ground just like any other relay and it also supplies power and ground to the hydraulic motor when commanded by the trans controller. There's a circuit for the command. There's also a circuit for the diagnostics so that if the trans controller detects a problem, it can set, shut the system down and go ahead and, and set a service transmission light and hopefully a code. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you where it's located. Like I said, right here in front of the battery, you've got your smart drive unit. Like I said, it's basically a dummy computer. It doesn't have a lot of features that it does. Its sole purpose is to live and thrive on operating a hydraulic pump that moves everything. Now, it's held in place with two 10 millimeter bolts and then you've got a connector. Now, there's nothing special once you replace it. You don't have to program it. You don't have to do anything like put the VIN or do any kind of weird test to configure it or program it. It's basically plug and play. So the main thing I recommend doing is first we need to get that connector off. Now the connector on the smart drive unit has a red lock on it and when you pull out the red lock what it does is it's got a kind of cuts in it as you pull it out the connector will actually start coming off. So as I pull out just slowly pull it once it's fully snaps in the release position you can actually just wiggle the connector off and move it out of the way. And it has a total of six terminals which I explained what they were earlier. Now all we got to worry about now is the two 10 millimeters right here. Once we get the two 10 millimeters out, the smart drive unit will actually just come out because it has two fingers that slide up in here and mount to that plastic corner of the battery tray. Down to our last 10 millimeter bolt. I'm just using a regular quarter inch ratchet. It's nothing special. You got plenty of clearance. You want to use something else. Get it out of the way. Like I said, it slides in place with the two fingers there. And I've already got my replacement right here. I'll go ahead and slide it up in here and all I got to do is start the two 10 millimeters, tighten them all the way up and then on our connector make sure it's fully released and then you line it up with the smart drive unit and once you get it lined up as you push in the connector will start pulling itself towards to make a nice tight fit. So all I got to do is tighten down these two and then recheck to make sure everything's working right. So we got the module back in place, we fired it up, we let it run, we went through the gears a few times and so far nothing has happened as far as a problem returning. No more service transmission, no more gear not allowed, uh, no more code. Awesome, that's what we were really looking for. So there you go, we know where the smart drive unit is, we know basically the theory behind how this system somewhat works as far as different modules. So try not to get the trans controller mixed up with the smart drive unit. They're two separate identities completely. Both of them are completely different. One you can communicate with is the trans controller that's inside under the passenger floorboard. Smart drive unit, there's nothing you can really do with it as far as testing with a scanner. You can basically command it through the TCM to turn the pump on and see if the pump works. And then you can check your powers, grounds, and signal from the trans control module. 
which in that case is basically just checking the circuit from here to there because it's pulse width modulated so it's not much you're going to be able to really test with so there's a limited on what you can check uh, so like I said it is kind of the redheaded stepchild uh, it's part of the trans controller but they mount it on the outside because it's closer and it's got some heavier duty wires running to it so it saves a little bit of money instead of running it all inside let's just run it from the outside control it from there so there you have it and once again thanks for watching these videos please give a thumbs up on YouTube and also you can like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter in the meantime if you have any more questions feel free to let me know otherwise check out the rest of my videos